moves us to our action agenda. Number 14, action as necessary or appropriate on matters discussed in executive session. Do I have a motion, Mr. Hogan? I'd like to make the motion that the board approve selected employment items shown in Exhibit A. Do I have a second? Second. I believe I heard Ms. Barnhart first. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? The motion carries seven to zero. And that brings us to item 15 on the action agenda, the second and final reading approval of proposed revisions to board policy IKE. Do I have a motion, Mr. Hogan? Uh, I'd like to make the motion that the board approve second and final reading of proposed revisions to board policy IKE, promotion and retention of students in exhibit E. Do I have a second? Second. I hear Ms. Snipes. And that brings us to the discussion. Dr. Ross and Ms. McCaskill. <coughs> Ms. McCaskill is available for any questions on this policy. All right. Do we have any questions? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion carries seven to zero. Thank you, Ms. McCaskill. And that brings us to the discussion agenda, which is the discussion of proposed revisions to board policy DBJ budget transfers, which is seen in Exhibit F. Dr. Ross. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. At uh, this time, we'd like to bring for discussion our budget transfer policy. Uh, we are uh, looking at how it operates in reality and its intent. And so our CFO, uh, Mr. Madison Wilkerson, will come forth and explain what uh, we recommend as we looked at uh, policies from around the state in our, in our area that would help us in um, in our daily operations. So, Ms. Wilkinson. Yes, I am going to discuss the uh, proposed revisions to board policy DBJ, which is in regarding budget transfers. As y'all know that we are required by law each, uh, each year to adopt a budget by July 1st. We begin that bu budget process really now um, and administratively, and then we go through, um, you know, of course, talking to our principals, our directors in the months of February, March, always looking at revenue projections at the state level, and then that takes us really to um, the, the meeting in April where we, pro excuse me, we discuss with y'all the first kind of iteration of the budget, and then we have first reading in, uh, by the first meeting in May. So that's normally kind of our, our, our annual process. But as y'all know, school doesn't start until August. So there is certainly um, things that change over the summer. There's certainly enrollment changes, just different things that truly just happen over the summer and into the new year. Um, so as schools are starting to open, we definitely notice some shifting um, from you know our FTE level. So we try really hard, certainly from the HR standpoint, not to actually shift people, but we look at our budget and we say, okay, well, we have a kindergarten teacher over at this school that we were not, uh, we no longer need. It's a vacancy. We're going to just plop that over here and we're going to take it over to a different school and that'll be now a second grade teacher, you know, different things like that. So that's something that they, the HR will kind of work around with enrollment and different things that we know at that time. Additionally, um, throughout the year, uh, another big thing that happens is that we may have some critical needs areas that uh, we are unable to hire. That could happen at the beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year um, with staffing changes. And um, we, we look, we of course try to post it, try to hire, and we may notice that we're unable to hire for those positions. So we, we look, kind of look internally and we say, okay, what can we do? So our next step is to possibly look at third party contractors. Um, to see if that is something that we can then, you know, get, get the needs in these classrooms. Um, and as part of that, that in indicates really an account code change. So we're moving, we really need money that was originally budgeted in salaries and fringe because we were going to hire internally, un unfortunately unable to do so. We really need that money to move to a purchase services account number. So that's truly a budget change. Um, and then additionally, another big thing that comes up each year is that the State Department of Ed does do an annual financial accounting handbook. And there are usually slight variations each year, but there are some account code change that we need to just kind of update as um, things continue. So with knowing all of that, we currently have a budget um, transfer policy that indicates uh, the board um, authorizes a superintendent or his or her designee to approve general fund line item, line item transfers in the aggregate totaling no more than $10,000. General fund budget transfers over $10,000 will be presented to the board for approval. Um, so, you know, as y'all know, our, our general fund budget is roughly $232 million. Um, so $10,000 is really a pretty low threshold um, for just our daily operations. 
Uh, you know, some of the things that, again, we kind of see on our end, every month I do present to you the um, monthly financial report. Um, if y'all have noticed on the revenue side, you'll notice that we have our state aid to classrooms is in a state aid to classroom account, but the actual amount is hitting a totally separate account. So that's $73 million that we have budgeted in one account, but the actual money is coming from the state in a, tip, a separate account. I would like to make those match. So it's not necessarily an overall change. Nothing would change. You wouldn't see anything. You know, our budget would still be $232 million, but right now with this restriction, I'm unable to make that change without your approval. Um, another item that we see a lot of times is technology. So there have been some funding um, changes at the state level, and um, this is kind of in the weeds for you guys, but something that used to be coded as an object code 345 is now an object code 445. So we have the budget in 345. We really need to move it to 445. It's not anything that I, I don't know, but I don't think you guys necessarily care about something like that. Um, but again, with this current budget uh, board policy, I can't make that change without your approval. Um, another item that we do see a lot is from our supply standpoint. So we consider anything under $5,000 a supply. Anything over $5,000 we have to capitalize. Um, so uh, something that does come up from time to time are band instruments. We see that a band instrument might be over $5,000. Well, the school has the money in their supplies account. They really need to move that money over to their, um, their capital account. If they're buying two of them. They don't have the money to do that. We can't make that transfer. And additionally, it says in aggregate. So it's something, you know, when I, when I think of aggregate, I think of the whole year. So it's not that they can move 5,000 this time and then 5,000 in a month and 5,000 the next month. When I look at it or when I read it and interpret it, it seems like we just can't make that transfer. Um, so in essence, it, it puts the budget out of whack. Um, some other items that do come up from time to time are certainly at the school level. They may have money into their supplies account. They really need to purchase service. They may need to move to purchase service for different reasons. This certainly happens at the facility standpoint when um, they have money and supplies and they thought that they could do the project in-house. Well, now it's an emergency and they've got to hire a contractor in there to get it done. Um, so it's a different account. So a lot of times it's truly just moving. It's, it's the same project. It's just moving it to the appropriate account number. Um, and that does happen from time to time. Um, additionally, just you know, full disclosure, there are human errors in our budget from time to time. Um, you know, something that had actually came up today is that um, we have a school with a very specific program um, and they had some supply needs. That program was, the supply needs for that program were actually budgeted in, in, in an incorrect location. So we were able to find it and I need, it's $25,000. I need to be able to move that over to the correct school um, when that does happen. Another item that has happened this year has been a typo in a principal supply account. Um, we put in $1,200, it should have been $12,000. So again, it's over that $10,000 threshold, but it's something that should be a, you know, readily available for me or a member of my team to be able to fix. But right now with this current policy, I would be out of compliance without coming to y'all. Um, <clears throat> one last item, just again, I'm trying to give you kind of really examples of what kind of go, come through our office day to day. Um, we use a lot of uh, what we call budget control codes, and this really helps us from a budgeting standpoint. Um, one of the ones that y'all um, probably have seen before is our substitute account. So we budget for substitutes in one line item. But of course, we know that we have substitutes all over the district and all different grade levels. So where they're actually charged is to the specific grade level, the correct account. So if I'm you know, kindergarten teacher, I'm out, of course, we're gonna charge that substitute to that specific account. But the budget's over here in this one account. We, what we do is we create budget control codes so that they're all linked. So when I look at that budget control code, I can tell you know, if we're, how, how we are from a balancing standpoint. But at the end of the fiscal year, if you're looking at that one account, it looks over budget. So just items like that where we should really be throughout the year truing up those accounts at, as we can. Um, so what I've presented for you is certainly our, our current policy, some proposed revisions. I did take a look at some policies around the state, certainly policies that were districts that were similar in size to us and um, you know, located geographically um, close to us. So I did look at several. The two that I kind of, um, I guess, merged together were Lexington One's current policy and Fort Mill's policy. Um, so in here I have that the superintendent or his his or her designee um, is approved to transfer budget amounts between function and object codes 
um, as long as total spending does not exceed the approved budget. Additions to the approved general fund budget must be approved by the board. So that would be in total. So at any time, if the um, administration needs to go from 232 million to 233 million, of course, that would always come to you. But anytime we're staying within our total budget, that would be something that we could do administratively. Um, and then additionally, all general fund line item transfers, regardless of the amount, will always appear in the monthly financial report. So you'll notice that's already in there. Um, if you look at the columns, we have our original budget, we have our um, adjustments, and then we have uh, final budget. So that column will still be there. So if any time there's questions or you need further information, that will still be there and that will always be presented to y'all. And certainly if there's ever um, a large transfer that we would, we would want to just bring that to your attention to, to be able to discuss it. But in general, that would all just be presented as information for questions. And again, that does kind of merge the two policies from Fort Mill and Lexington one. But I have also um, supplied you some, some existing policies from districts around us. So we have Richland one, um, similar to Lexington one, where the superintendent or his or her designee um, will establish the approval parameters for all budget transfers. So they really don't mention the board at all. Um, but I did like the language in, I believe it was Lexington ones that talks about bringing those always at the fun, uh, the monthly financial reports. Also included Richland two um, that authorizes the superintendent or his or her doesn't need to approve budget transfers between major categories within the general fund uh, to effectively operate the school district. So those are just kind of some examples, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention to give you kind of real world operations of some, some things that I see on my end and I, that I feel like maybe um, are, are kind of delaying our operations a little bit if I truly have to bring everything to y'all to approve. And I'll be glad to take any other questions. Um, I did, you know, I, I included a <coughs> handful of board policies from around the state, but I did just kind of quickly look at some other ones um, very similar to the policies that I've included in here were Richland 1, 2, Lex 1, Fort Mill, Rock Hill, Sumter, Anderson 5, Lexington 2, Newberry. They all had very, very similar language. Um, there was a, a couple that had um, a little bit more restrictive language um, in there as well. Um, Beaufort did have a $50,000 um, program limitation. Oconee had a $50,000 program limitation, but again, program wasn't necessarily defined. So I didn't feel like that was very clear, putting in that dollar value. So um, that's why I left out the dollar and just said in total, as long as the budget in total does not exceed the approved budget by the Board of Trustees that the administration has the authority to make those transfers. And uh, we had uh, legal review this as well. Yes, sir. So we did have um, Alan Smith from Mahoney, Halligan, and Williams, I believe. Um, Miss Kathy Mahoney's um, firm. <laughs> he looked at it for me. Um, he did not see uh, any legal issues with that. Um, I did look at the school board's association website as well. I was unable to find a model policy for this, um, but I can certainly reach out to Stephanie Lawrence um, in their office to, to see if she has any suggestions as well, but I did reach out to Alan Smith. So we submit this, Madam Chair, members of the board for discussion only. All right, any questions? Ms. Huddle? Um, <clears throat> the, one of the examples you gave was on the musical instruments. Um, so that would be moved from the capital to the operating or it would still be within the operating? It's still within the operating. It's just considered a capital expenditure for us. Okay, so just from general. one category to it's another. It's just an account. Yeah, an okay. account number change. Yes, ma'am. Well, that would one suggestion I would have is I think it was Richland too. It, the policy was very clear. It said operating fund. So I would suggest that we include that just to make sure it's crystal clear. Um, the other thing, I mean, I totally agree with doing this. I mean, I, I can see how it's just very time consuming to like, especially the substitutes and, and that kind of thing. The only um, caveat I would make is I think it might be good for some kind of threshold to get board approved. And I'll just give you an example. We budgeted um, how much for, for um, Chapin High School for portables? Okay, 1.5 million, that's a lot of money, okay? I would think that the board would want to get involved if that money was going to be spent differently. So yeah, I don't know what the threshold, I think 10,000 is way too low, or maybe you carve out things like 
the substitute teachers because that's not really, it, it's just bean counting right there. You're just moving it from one pot to another. It's the exact same thing. It's just in two different places. So that's the only you know, suggestion that I have. Uh, other suggestion is just, um, and you're better at the wording of it, but if it's within the same type of expense, you know, I think that I don't see why the board needs to get involved, but if we're moving it from one type of expense to a totally different type of expense and it's over a certain amount, I think that the board ought to approve that. And I have a question, and, and this may be to Dr. Ross, and I'm looking at this and I just can't, I, I don't see it in here, but I feel like um, that I heard when we were, you had mentioned that we were, you were bringing this policy today and there was um, some discussion about putting, like when this policy is, is implemented and utilized and there are purchases or there, there's money moved around, that that would be included in the monthly financial report so that we would know that that had happened and it wouldn't be like a, it would be like in real time? Yes, so okay. um, essentially. Oh, is that is that at, part of that? Because that's yeah, not so, in the policy. Well, well, the where, I guess where I'm seeing it is in the second uh, okay. to last sentence. It says all general fund line, line item transfers regardless of the amount will appear in the monthly financial report. Okay. So um, if you look at your monthly financial report now, you'll notice that like it has the original budget and it has a, and a column for adjustments right beside it. So we're already doing some transfers, but again, we're trying to keep it under that $10,000 threshold. So you, you can already see that there's some m movement in and out. The other um, thing with that, uh, the way that that is presented, it's not by location. So you may even look at that report and say, well, look at these adjustments, like there's one for 27,000. Well, it's not really 27,000, that's looking at all the high schools. So it could be that Chapin High School did a 9,000 and you know Irmo did eight. And the, you know, so it really is kind of misleading anyway because you don't see it so granular. Um, so those adjustments do already look like, well, maybe you're not already following the policy, but we, we are. It's just the way that y'all see it is not as granular as the way that I'm looking at it. And I see it from, you know, an account number with a location, everything like very, very specific. But the way that it is presented is truly just in general by function. Okay. Any other <clears throat> questions? Mr. Scully? Yeah, real quickly. Um, <clears throat> I don't think uh, the recommendations from Ms. Huddle are necessary. I, I think the way that it's written um, in the proposed language kind of takes care of those concerns. And like you said, we'll get a monthly report that'll, um, those will show up on uh, the policy says they'll be in compliance with the guidelines found in the financial accounting handbook for South Carolina public school districts. So I, I really think it would still, it wouldn't be necessary. That's, that's just my, my opinion. So I just wanted to say that anything else all right thank you miss wilkerson <laughs> mr hogan i'd like to make a motion that we adjourn this meeting Do I have second. A second oh i heard i heard elizabeth barnhart on that one uh any discussion all in favor Mike, are you voting against? Oh, no, okay. No. <laughs> wow. All right. That motion carries seven to zero. We adjourn until the next meeting. Thank you.